Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series. Facilitated by renowned educators, ISE podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. Welcome, everyone. This is Steve Meisinger, your host and presenter for today's ISE webinar. Today, I'm pleased to be talking about or actually answering FX questions, FX options questions. So this is uh, something we have not done before. However, I'm really looking forward to answering all your questions. I get a lot of questions at the uh, Ask site, fxoptions.com, Ask the Expert. Uh, sometimes I'll get questions coming right to my email box regarding currency options, FX options. So we thought it would be a great idea to have a whole session just for all of you, the attendees, for any question that you might have. So there won't be any content today. We're not going to be talking about the euro imploding or the U.S. dollar uh, trading at a big discount against the Australian dollar. What we are going to talk about, though, is how you can set up your trades, any kind of questions that you might have regarding currency options. Uh, please um, just um, jot them down. In fact, type them in the chat box, and then I will um, try to address every one of your questions. I'd urge you to go to the OIC site if you want to learn more about options. It's a great site. Uh, there, everything there is free. Uh, you can get a copy of the characteristics and risk of standardized options. Um, the site is title of it is optionseducation.org. So please check that out. Or you can call 1-888-OPTIONS. So that's uh, something that I would highly recommend that you do. And here are the symbols. Uh, this is, uh, I guess, the question that I get most often is, what is the symbol for the Canadian dollar? Well, the Canadian dollar symbol is simply CDD. We have dual conventions in some of the currency pairs. So for example, you'll note that the Australian dollar, the British pound, the euro, and the New Zealand dollar both trade or all trade in dual conventions, meaning that you can trade based on the, a dollar base or a dollar quote. So the four symbols that we added about a year ago were very similar or are similar to uh, the spot currency convention, where we, in the spot market, as you're all aware, Australian dollar is the base currency. Same thing with the British pound, the euro, and the New Zealand dollar. So we added those to round out our lookalikes, if you will, from the spot market. Um, the other ones, if you take a look at the Brazilian real, Canadian dollar, Japanese yen, Mexican peso, Swedish krona, and Swiss franc, well, they're all dollar-based. Now, this is very important. And most importantly, it, the symbols, these would be the symbol that you would type into your equity options brokerage account to access the ISC options market. The IC options market is made, the markets themselves are not made by any representative from the International Securities Exchange. They're made by market makers. So the same market makers that might quote Google or Microsoft or Apple or anything else like that would also be quoting the ISCFX options. But most importantly, you need to know if you're going to trade dollar base or dollar quote, is that that way you'd know if it's if you'd be looking to buy calls or buy puts, sell calls or sell puts, and uh, of course the symbol is very very important. So at this time, now that I just gave you a, a brief background about the ISC FX options product, uh, what I'd like to do is take all of your questions. I think that um, that would be uh, that's why we're here. 
So let's get to your questions. I have a question here. Let's see if I can create a whiteboard. Let's see if this works. Let's see if I can do this. I guess I just have to announce the question. I'm not sure how to type it in a white on a whiteboard. I should know how to do that, but here's a question question from Patricia. Are, are all the symbols available for all stockbrokers? Great question. They are. Here's the challenging point from my perspective. Every broker is going to have is going to require a different prefix. So some might be a little carrot, if you will. Um, some might be a dollar sign. And so you have to ask your broker uh, how you access index options because these were really created very much like an index option. So for many brokers, it might be dollar sign, looking at the Canadian dollar, CDD. For some, it might be the, the carrot sign, if you will, CDD. Uh, others, it might be just a, a simple dot CDD. So you have to ask their help desk or what is the format for index options? Cause Essentially, this is the way we, we created this as a, essentially uh, very similar to an index option. So every broker takes these products. Any broker that takes the equity options product in the United States will also be able to facilitate your trades with ISCFX options. So I'm, I'll go through a brief list. This is not all inclusive. I won't be able to remember them all, but I'm just trying to think of some brokers that uh, you'd be able to trade this through. Let me think about this. Uh, trade King would be uh, one. Trade Station is another. Um, e Trade, Fidelity, Options Express, Interactive Brokers, uh, TD Ameritrade, Charles Schwab. Uh, there are so many brokers that you'd be able to trade this product through. I just mentioned a couple of them. But essentially, uh, just about every equity options broker uh, will be a, will take your business here. So uh, if you wanted to hedge, so let's say you felt that the euro in 2011 was going to fall significantly, and you might have some investments in Europe or you have some revenue, um, and you really wanted to hedge. Well, I'm not sure, certain where it is uh, where the euro is trading today, but let's just say it's is trading at 134. You could buy the 134 put to hedge that weakness. Um, of course, uh, you, conversely, you might be in Europe and saying, you know what, the dollar's rallied, but I'm sorry, the euro's rallied, but you know what, I think the dollar is going to weaken even further. And if you had business in the United States, you might actually buy some 134 uh, if you felt that the Euro was going to rally, well, you might even buy some 134 calls in EUU. So that's how you look at it. I really look at it as what do I feel about the base, the base instrument. So, for example, if I'm looking at the Australian dollar trading near parity, uh, that pair is trading at 100, whether it's AUX or AUM. Very, very different products because AUX will appreciate if the dollar rallies. AUM will appreciate if the dollar sells off or if the Australian dollar rallies. So you need to really get those 
uh, straight before you implement any options trade. Um, so I've got another question here. Where can I trade? And I think I just answered that. They said some of the brokers, uh, Trade King uh, would be, again, one that you could look at. TradeStation is another. Options Express is another. Uh, Fidelity, Schwab, TD Ameritrade, those are all brokers, and there are others uh, that will be able to handle your business. Interactive brokers, um, they will handle your business. So you'll just need to have an account and an equity options broker. I'm getting, I'm getting a question, what is cash settlement and how does that differ from an ETF or equity option? Well, cash settlement means that you will never receive any physical, the physical underlying. So let's just, using a simple example of uh, an equity option, they are physically settled in the United States, meaning that if you bought the, let's say you had a certain stock was trading at 100 uh, and the stock goes up to 105, well, you don't exercise and buy the shares at 100. What you actually would receive is the difference, or in, this, in that case, the five points if you bought a call. Of course, if it was the put, it would be worthless. So it's very similar in ICFX options. In fact, it's pretty straightforward. You don't have to worry about having it deliver Japanese yen or having to receive British pounds. Um, it's just going to be cash settlement. These, these options settle at 12 o'clock noon Eastern time on expiration Friday. So we just had an expiration last week. Now we're, of course, working on the February cycle for many uh, months that are out there. We go out nine or 10 months. So you could uh, make longer term forecasts if you like. I hope that helps. Again, Type your questions in the chat box. <laughs> um, I've seen a couple of them roll in. A question from Tony, let me see. Uh, Tony says, when doing credit spreads, does the buy and sell orders cancel out the volatility effect on, of, on the opposing options? Therefore, I can put on credit spreads in a higher low environment. That's exactly right, Tony. In fact, credit spreads are a great way, or even debit spreads, to mitigate a lot of your volatility risk. Now. In the environment we're in, if you're looking at single months, you're not going to see a big difference. In fact, you can go to the ISC site, the FX option site, and you'll notice the different strike prices over different months, and that's also called skew, uh, or even di different volatilities, I should say, over different months. It's, we're really talking volatilities, not the strike prices. The strike prices will, of course, are different. But the, the implied volatilities would be slightly different. Uh, if you do a vertical spread, so for example, if you were looking at the Australian dollar and you wanted to buy, let's say, the at the money 100 and sell the 102 or 103, you could easily do that. And one big benefit to that is that most of the volatility effect is now taken out of the trade, as you pointed out, Tony, that if you do the, either the debit or the credit spread, it really doesn't matter that uh, because you're buying one option and selling another, a lot of the volatility risk is uh, mitigated, reduced. So again, if you're concerned about volatility, and a lot of us are, us option traders, um, we are concerned with that, that you can implement spreads. So the second part of the question is, um, what are the disadvantages? In fact, actually, this isn't part of the question Tony asked, but. And this is something that I'd like to answer is that, so why wouldn't you always want to do credit or debit spreads? Well, if you believe that the market was going to make a huge move up or down, I mean, you really wouldn't want to do a credit or debit spread because when you're doing these spreads, you have limited risk and limited reward, meaning that you're capping your potential gain. So in a market like we've been over the last year, credit spreads, debit spreads probably better um, because you're uh, selling one option to buy another. Um, you're limiting your upside, but you're also um, hedging yourself a bit. If you wanted to make a more aggressive, uh, implement a more aggressive strategy, you could easily buy a single leg call or single leg put with much greater risk to debit, however, with much greater potential rewards. Remember, during the credit crisis of 2008, 2009, 
we saw currencies go berserk. The U.S. dollar rallied significantly, and the, the, probably the best trades were single-leg bullish U.S. dollar positions. Of course, after the credit crisis, probably the reverse was true. Um, you could have done sort of bearish U.S. dollar positions, or even at some point, though, the, as Tony pointed this out, vol was so high that the credit spreads, debit spreads, might have even been another way. So just think of it is that if you're buying a single leg option, you're buying volatility risk. If you're doing credit spreads, you're hedging or you're limiting your volatility risk. Um, John wants to know if there are any major differences uh, in the, uh, the dual convention. I think John's question is, so if you look at eight Australian dollar, British pound, Euro and New Zealand dollar, you'll notice that they're all quoted what we call dual convention. Are there any major differences? Well, the only thing I can say is that for a lot of us, we look at the spot market every day. So if we look at the spot market every day, we're a lot more familiar with the underlying value if we look at AUM, GBP, EUU, and NDO. But other than that, John, really, no, there aren't any major differences. Uh, the big difference is that you have to look at calls versus puts, depending on your view. Because obviously, if AUM is going up a lot, AUX is going down a lot. AUX is going up a lot, AUM is going down a lot. It's, it's just a mirror image of each other. hope that helps. Got a question here from Tony. And I'm just going to repeat the question. Your dollar is the base pair in FX options. So when you look at the chart, if it shows strength and weakness of the dollar, not the other pair. Oh, great. Tony's, I guess, saying, well, if you look at these currencies uh, and you see that, for example, you get, you're seeing an uptrend in AUM, does it mean that the Australian dollar is strong or the U.S. dollar is weak? Well, you really have to do an analysis of, analysis of other currencies to really probably um, get a better view of that. Because at face value, if you only looked at one, it's a ratio. Remember, currency trading is a relative trade. So you wouldn't really know which one's strong and which one's weak unless you analyze other ones to see is it really that the Australian dollar is so strong or is it that the U.S. dollar is so weak. Um, and I guess we could argue over the last uh, year or so, the Australian dollar has been very, very strong relative to other currencies. Another currency that's been very, very strong, Swiss franc for a different reason. So those have been two of the leaders over, I guess, uh, I'm just approximating the last year, uh, Swiss franc, Australian dollar. One is based on growth. Uh, another is based on safety or the uh, the ability to get out of the euro and be in a somewhat of a neutral currency um, that might not have the problems that the dollar and the euro have. Um, so again, that's sort of a sa another safe haven currency, the Swiss franc. So let's take a look here, see some more questions. Good, good. Yeah, thank you, John. Glad you liked the explanation. Uh, Patricia asks, will we see weekly options? Well, the answer is we hope so, Patricia, but we'd like to see some more volume in the options themselves. Uh, interestingly enough, the bid-ask spreads are extremely tight, even though our option volume has not been as robust as we'd like. Uh, one way around that, though, and I, I think it was brought up, John brought it up, I think, right? Let me just take a look. I think it was John. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, Tony brought it up about spreads. If you're worried about getting in and out of a trade, well, one way that you can get into a trade a lot easier is by doing a spread trade. So if you see that volume is very, very low or non-existent in a certain strike price, that doesn't mean you can't trade it. Uh, what you might want to do instead of just buying that single leg option is maybe put in the spread order. Uh, all your brokers will be able to take that spread order, and with that spread order, that order goes right to our spread book, and our market makers are more likely to trade with your spread because it does have limited risk, 
compared to uh, a single or a naked option. So it's another advantage of spread trading. It, uh, it's really easy to get in and out of the trades. Okay. Let's see what else we see. Uh, get a question, and this is an often mentioned question, is since these options are European style, which means that you can't exercise them early, uh, does that mean I have to hold them to expiration? And the answer, of course, is no. Uh, don't get European exercise confused with not being able to close out your position. You can close out of your FX options position any day you'd like, as long as the market's open and there's still uh, a viable market for that strike price. But you can't exercise them early. Ex uh, early exercises are only available for American style options. These options are European style. Again, in European style might actually be something that uh, would encourage a credit spreader to look at these because there is no risk that, of an early exercise. So somebody that likes to sell one option and buy another, they don't have to worry about being assigned early, as you might uh, have that risk when you trade plain old equity options here in the U.S. All right, let's move on. Uh, another question. Question about strike price and leverage. Is there a best strike price? So, for example, going back to the Australian dollar, trading about parity, so we know that the ISE pair value is about 100. And what does that mean if the uh, pair value is 100? Well, it means obviously that it's equal, one currency is equal with the other. Now, you might be making a, a view. Yeah, you think that the Australian dollar is going to rally even further, that uh, the China story will continue. So if that story is going to continue, well, the Australian dollar is probably going to rally even further. And if that's the case, then what could you do? Well, you can buy the 98 calls, you could buy the 100 calls, you could buy the 102s, you could buy the 104s, it, and you could buy some other strike in between. Is there a best strike price to buy? No. Uh, the further out you look, the more leverage you can get. And I know, uh, and I get this question often from spot traders because they're all, always concerned with where can I get the most leverage. I'm actually going to turn this to all of you, the attendees. Where, if you wanted maximum leverage and you wanted to buy an option, where would you get maximum leverage looking at an ISC FX option? Would you buy an in-the-money, an at-the-money, or an out-of-the-money option? So you could just type, let's see who's fastest. Um, okay, we're getting some questions. Where would you get the most leverage, in, at, or out-of-the-money The most leverage. Think about it. Where would you get the most leverage? Meaning that where could I buy the most options and hope that if, I'm, if the underlier makes a big move, I would make the most money. Of course, it has to happen, happen in that short time frame that I select. Would that happen in, at, or out of the money options? I'm just going to pick numbers. Let's say the in the money option is four. The at the money option is two and the out-of-the-money option is one. Think of it logically. You can buy four times as many out-of-the-money options as in-the-money options. So that's how you really explain leverage in the options world is you can get more leverage with the out-of-the-money option. It does not mean that the out-of-the-money option is better. In fact, in a market like we've been in recently where volatility is contracting, declining, the out-of-the-money options have not been a good investment. They've not been a, a good purchase because you need a big move. So think of options as the ability to control something without putting up so much money. Well, the out-of-the-money option, if I believe that the Australian dollar is going to go to 110, it'd be much better for me to buy the 104 call than to buy the 100 or the 98 or the 96 call. So that's the way I look at leverage. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.